What's up, Nadine? Hi, Dre. Dude, we've actually both been looking forward this, to this for a while. I'm so excited, dude. We've been hyping this up for a while. Yeah. Uh, and now that I'm not in school anymore. Yeah, that's like the main reason. Like, like it was just like, Nadine, you want to come in? Oh, Nadine. By the way, guys, Nadine, not Nadine. And uh, I, I don't, sorry if I make that mistake, but uh, <laughs> no one else make that mistake. Um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, so we met through CFC. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we both kind of lived that life, and then you went to school, I, you know, I did my stuff, uh, all YouTube knows about all, all the stuff that I do, but then, um, we both redis kind of rediscovered e each other again through Twitch and streaming. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Because I remembered you just, I just remembered you had a stream that you had a Twitch channel, but I had never seen anything. And mm -hmm. I think I was still getting acquainted and like networking all over Twitch and just following random people. And I said, Oh my gosh, Dre has a stream. Yeah, yeah. Let me go see what what it's like. It's super chill. I love it there. Yeah, my stream is uh, really relaxed. Um, I don't really try to grow aggressively or anything like that. I just do my stuff and then stream. Whoever wants to hang out can hang out. Yeah, for sure. I think and then that's, it, the way, that's the best way to go about it, honestly. Yeah. I agree. Um, and the first time I went to your stream, I think you were cooking? Yeah. I don't remember what it was. Same. It. I, I like, all of my cooking stream memories are fading away, unfortunately, because I don't really cook anymore. Oh, really? Or I don't cook on stream anymore. Yeah. I'm shifting away from it. Although that's how I started my stream. So it's an occasional thing now. Okay. I mean, it, streaming is always like you and you just end up doing whatever you want, whatever you feel like, and kind of just go with the flow. Exactly. Like it's my little corner. It's my little platform on the internet for me to just do whatever I want with yeah. it. So right now I'm really resonating with like variety games and co-working, mm -hmm. especially since I, um, I was in school. Mm -hmm. So yeah. co-working like especially late at night was really really helpful for me because it got me it like made me more productive than when i was just doing my work regularly without streaming it i really it like really weird. i i really like co-work streams it's like i i, I think when i saw because i i also tuned into your stream one time when you were doing that and i thought it was really unique like you're not really interacting that much but it's like an environment it's like an office almost that we're just kind of chilling together. And I feel like I really need that sometimes because I feel like if I'm less productive when I'm working alone. I, I discovered that. And Same here. Even if the people I'm working with, quote unquote, are not working, you know, on the same thing as me, um, it just feel, it's just nice to have the company. It's almost like someone's accountable for you, even though, you know, they're not really doing anything for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, ever since I started on TikTok, I ran, I landed on this one, um, this one person who either has ADHD or they're an expert on ADHD. And they talked about this thing called body doubling hmm. and essential. Um, I'm going to let me like properly Google the definition of it because it's, <laughs> it's really, really interesting. So uh, body doubling ADHD. Here we go. ADHD. <laughs> My bad. Oh, it's essentially like, the idea of having somebody watching you while you're doing your work or just uh, having somebody in the room while you're doing your work. Yes. And so like for me, whenever either my sister, my mom or my boyfriend or whoever is just in the room with me, I feel like I'm much more productive that way. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes I'm like, please leave me alone. I need to get my work done. But for the most part, I, re I resonate with body doubling because there there's other people working alongside me. So I feel a little less alone dude yeah like. i feel like I, i've always needed that I, mm. I don't know like um when i'm alone and trying to work i just end up like getting e so easily distracted like my brain is just so messed up with i'm like a zoomer you know like just social media has messed up my brain where the fact that if i just get distracted by one little thing i end up going down a rabbit hole of that thing um and just get stuck yeah same I've had I've had that happen to me before, and I ended up pulling an all nighter just to finish my work. Yeah, because I fell into like a rabbit hole of videos regarding ADHD. Because mm -hmm. I've never really like, I've never really dove into it until now, honestly. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, I used to like hire, try to hire an assistant uh, to try to help me with stuff. And I felt they would always ask, what do you actually need? And there's like social media, social media management and stuff, which I find to be a hassle. There's like planning and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's just somebody to be accountable and tell me to start working in the morning at the right time. You know what I mean? Like that's sometimes <laughs> yeah. that's all I need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just good morning, Dre. Get your work done. Exactly. Lunch exactly. This time. Have a great day. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. It. And I've even tried like having a virtual assistant do that. Like, you know, just your phone. Because, you know, our phones and computers have plenty of programs that can do that, but it's yeah. still not enough. Like, having a real human person is just so valuable. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it It also increases that, like, interpersonal relationship that you have with that person, especially mm. if you know them and they're the one that's holding you accountable. So that makes it even more effective, in my opinion. Yeah. But dang, what was it like having a virtual assistant? I need to know. Uh, I, it's like... I mean, I've had a couple of real assistants, um, and then trying to use my phone and computer as a virtual assistant is it's just like, I don't know. It's easy to say no to someone that's not real, you know? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like easy to be like, ah, I set that up for myself so I can just not listen to it. <laughs> it's the, I don't know why the brain is naturally just so undisciplined, you know? Mm. Like Me and to-do lists, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like, why? I, that's a huge question. Like, why can I set out to do something and just not do it? Mm. I don't know. It's, I'm sure that's a big question that a lot of people try to answer. Yeah, it's it's a very broad question for, like, a psychiatrist to answer. Cause that would, that's an interesting question to dive into. Like, why yeah. are our brains... It's the free will of it all. Let's yeah. just say that. I think, um... Well, at the at the very least, what I can do is try to find something that kind of does work. Um, hmm. So for me, streaming is one of those. It's a big one, actually. Um, and I feel like incentives can help, like short-term rewards. Like if I get this certain amount of work done, then I can go treat myself to In-N-Out Burger or something like that. Um, yeah. That's that's one. And then um, long-term incentives, of course, like long-term goals, is uh, really centers you. Um, you can really orient yourself towards something, like a dream that's really hmm. far away um we're not really far away but you know slowly move toward a life that you want i don't know there's a lot of different strategies but i guess it's hard to it's hard to answer the singular question like why can't we do the stuff that we set out to mm. i mean it's easier for some people than others it's always been tough for me mm. i think it's really like you have to train yourself and discipline yourself in order to get things done and um a lot of the self-help like audiobooks that i've listened to, to always talk about we always gravitate we as people always gravitate to the path of least resistance and yeah. that's why procrastination is so easy for people to do like oh yeah i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and then tomorrow becomes today yeah and then yeah. the cycle starts all over again yeah and then it just never ends yeah because you're and then it ends up being that the task that you're putting off takes five minutes of your day that's yeah. the part that yeah, it makes I, me so angry at myself. I'm just like, this took 20 minutes uh -huh. and it took me two weeks to do it. What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard of something called like the two minute, <clears throat> excuse me, the two minute rule where it says like, if something takes two minutes to do, just do it now. You know, mm -hmm. there's no reason to like schedule it. I mean, it's, it's not going to disrupt your schedule. Just do it now. Things like taking out the trash, I don't know, checking your email. I mean, checking your email can often take more than two minutes, but. Something like taking out the trash, like some kind of chore that you just put off or, you know, if it takes two minutes, just do it. That's like something I've been trying to think about, implement. Anyway, Is that a trap? Uh, <laughs> I do want to, I mean, we've been just kind of on a, a bit of a tangent here. I do want to talk about like the thing that we actually mm -hmm. wanted to talk about uh, yeah. when we first, when we first were interested in doing a podcast together. Um... We wanted to talk about kind of our past lives. It's almost like a past life mm. in in CFC. Uh, in it pretty much is for me. I will be honest. It yeah. pretty much is. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I, I guess the question that I would ask you is, what was it called when you joined? Because it's had many names. For me, it's called um, CFC YFL. CFC YFL. Okay, so I yeah. I joined 
a stage before that when it was still called YFC. Yeah. Oh, and then, did you join before the split? Yes, yes. And mm. then it, it split up, and then it became CFC Youth FFL, and then they mm. shortened it to YFL, yes. and it was that for many years, and then they changed it even now to something else, MFC Youth or something like that. I, I think so. I stopped keeping up. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I do want to preface this by saying, I mean, the, the reason it's so important to us is because it was a defining, almost defining time period in our lives where we were so into it, so active, mm. quote unquote. Mm. We'll talk about that word active in a little bit too. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, honestly, a net good in my life for sure, uh, I would say. Um, I mean, I would not be as devout a Christian and a Catholic as I would, as I am now, if not for, for being there. Mm. Um, but like, I feel like, I, I mean, the reason we got so interested in talking about this is because a lot of things that just don't get talked about. I, we're not here to like talk crap about something that made us who we are, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like full on disclaimer. We're not, we're not here to talk about the people in a very, in a very malicious manner or just that community overall in general we're talking uh -huh. about our experiences as an individual and what we got out of our time there yeah before anybody comes for the both of us because i know like a lot of our friends are still in either in that community or um have some sort of involvement there yeah 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 i mean i'm, I'm not here to talk crap like uh, obviously it's a net good uh, but there were a lot of things for me that just fell short I uh, felt that could be improved. And it, it, I always ask the question, like, what could I do to improve it? And then when I tried, I just ran into some crazy bureaucracy that was based in the Philippines or based in, like, some crazy 20-year-long traditions that I just couldn't touch, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's funny because it's almost like a microcosm of the church itself because I'm sure people run into the same type of politics in the mm -hmm. Catholic Church, the same type of bureaucracy, uh, mm -hmm. the same type of, you know, clashes and decision-making and splitting up that that just it just happens and you're there and you're a teenager and it's like you know i just want to do this and that and you can't you know that's what yeah. i that's one of the big things that i ran into but um before we get too much into that i i want to talk about like the roots or, or your roots and my roots in it mm -hmm. like well, how old were you when you first joined and like what was your first what was your initial experience like in the first couple of years i think i was 13 and what year was that 13 this was 2011 okay yeah i was 13 oh my god sorry i didn't realize how time just flies this yeah. would have been this year would have been my 10 year anniversary oh. in the community had mm -hmm. i not had i not left but yeah no, i think i was 13 2011 again i'm not entirely sure about this timeline but it's all good um so my parents had already been members before in the philippines before they moved here mm -hmm. and then they rediscovered the community god knows how i truly don't know i never like thought to ask them how they mm -hmm. found the community again and they just invited me to um this one sister's household and i wasn't even a member yet and i was like i'm about to meet a bunch of strangers while being introduced by another stranger how am i supposed to feel mm -hmm. and so you know, at first I was like, all right, cool. Like, it's a bunch of kids in one room screaming, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It was great. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and at the time I was, I was very impressionable at the time. So anywhere where I felt like I was accepted in some, some form or some form or another, or where I was, you know, kind of seen and I kind of fit in, in one way, shape or form, of course, I'm going to gravitate towards it. Mm hmm and that's exactly what happened and then you and it's not like it was it was a bad thing of course but um yeah i kind of just fit in and i was like all right cool like these people under like these people understand that god is a very important um factor in my life mm -hmm. and th these are kids my age this is crazy cuz i've always just been around people who love god but they're my parents age and it's their kids but um they didn't really take it as seriously as i did no tino mm -hmm. shade to them because some of them are my best friends and they're in a different place in my life now, which is great. Um, 
the first couple of years i was i felt like i was on a high and i just kept chasing that high of post camp post any event that you can think of i was always chasing that and at some point i started chilling out and the high was still there but i it wasn't the thing that i was living for anymore it was just that the relationship with god that i started chasing more mm-hmm. and how um my relationship with other people can reflect that and i feel like that's still kind of how i go about my relationships to this day um god is still in the center but i just look at how i how my relationships with people can reflect what it is that i believe in and i'm pretty sure you 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 might share a sentiment or two in there so yeah, that was that's me. I was in um I was in that community for I believe nine no seven, eight years, let's just call it there. Mm-hmm. And then I just started serving the church more, like as far as parish goes and catechism. Yeah. yeah. I was a confirmation leader for like a couple of years. And then mm-hmm. that was a whole other mess conversation for another day because I don't know how to get started. <laughs> right, right. But but that um but leaving the community for me made me realize that like, oh, it's, this was a good stepping stone for me. This wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be sustainable for me. Yeah. Especially in the way that my life was going. So having a relationship with God through, you know, through mass and just through just being a Catholic in general, I felt like became more of a priority for me than staying in this community. So and then there were other factors too, but we'll we'll get into it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk what you mentioned a high, and <laughs> I think that's such a great word because, I mean, I've kind of wised up to it now. When you're a mm-hmm. kid and you hear people seeing camp withdrawals, mm-hmm. it's it's very interesting because me, uh, like I was already in my early to mid twenties when I was like starting to really observe. You know, kids are kids are still saying this. Um. And I mean, you don't use the word withdrawal unless you were actually high and pursuing like uh, some kind of addiction, right? Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons it, it is structured the way it is is because, uh, especially for the youth ministry, is that they copied a lot of um, sort of evangelical Protestant strategies, um, oh. and the the, char- the charismatic movement of the Catholic Church was like low key inspired by um like Protestant movements, right? Like Hillsong United and the way uh the how passionate they are in the church. And the Catholic Church was like, you know what? Uh they took a look at it and a lot of people didn't like it, like really super traditional type Catholics or the trads as you call them, the traditional types. Mm-hmm. Uh some of them didn't like that. They're like, you know, there's no reason for this. But some Catholics were like, you know what, we could embrace that and be like yeah, we should look at our talents. We should look at um what they call it the the your charisms. Mm-hmm. Um, we should take those things, you know, the emotions and feelings, and just integrate it, uh, into the way we evangelize and grow the church. And it really works. Uh, mm-hmm. on on a, it works on like a surface level because people in their human nature are easily swayed by their feelings, right? And um. You know, when, when you're growing up, and like you said, you were impressionable when you were a kid. I, I joined also when I was 13. Um, you know, you get that, you get a good feeling, and then suddenly you you have what, you know, what psychologists call a, a peak experience. Um, you can do it. You can get that when you're super drunk. You can get that when you're really into a sport like tennis. You just get, reach a high level. You can reach a peak experience when you're high on shrooms. Like... But for us, it was yeah. it was the moment of, you know, glorious worship to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And those what what I love about that that type of peak experience is I still feel it is very genuine, and it is something yeah. I think it's something healthy to pursue. Mm-hmm. Um, but the feelings involved and the feelings involved with you know retreating from life and being in a space with a uh, with a bunch of people your age. And, you know, diving in like a complete nosedive into this type of living um, is so makes such a strong impression on a young person that it becomes the meaning of their life. Yeah. Um, Like essentially. And for a lot of us and for a lot of people, I know that's kind of how it was. Um, And it's very interesting because 
like from certain frames of reference it is the correct way to look to live you know if you want to straight up be saint peter if you want to straight up be an apostle like that kind of is how to do it you know just it you know using that those strategies that they use on us as a way to you know bring people into the church and if it works uh that's great um but then i'm i, I always just return back to the human nature of it that you know the fact that we do have dopamine loops in our brain like the fact that we do get addicted to things to anything means that we will experience what's called the withdrawal and start pursuing the thing that got us on a high right um yeah. like the way people treated this lifestyle was very drug-like honestly and um uh that, that was a big problem for me because there was a moment i remember it was like a team empowerment worship at some camp and i I just opened my eyes once and i had a moment of clarity i'm like i just had asked this question what if we're brainwashed what if we're all this is less like not right and that really sent me for a loop. That really sent me for like, like I was like 20 or 21 at the time. And I was like, dude, what if none of this is real? I just had that moment, like just asking a yeah. question, right? Um, And then, you know, uh, that's when I really st started to mentally step away. I mean, it took me like five years still to like fully like, you know, reach the path that I thought was more, was closer to where I ought to be. Um. But that was a moment where I was like, you know what? I, I need to rethink the way I approach my life. Um, mm. Anyway, I, I, I do want to talk about the beginnings, too, for me, because I joined when I was 13. But it's pretty much the same story as you in the first few years. Super active in the middle of high school, you know, so because I was an awkward kid. You know, all I cared about was like video games and stuff. Kind of a bit of an outcast in school. So it was difficult for me to invite people to the camps and stuff, you know, just randomly asking your classmate, hey, want to come to this thing is youth camp where we you know they're like what do you do there well you just, you know you just meet people you say you meet mm -hmm. people but in the reality it's like oh you're gonna go there and learn about jesus and worship jesus and at the end of the camp you basically have this commitment ceremony where you're you're, you're telling you know 13 year olds do you want to make a life commitment you know so mm -hmm. it's, it's it's pretty it's so it's so intense and you know it's no like one warns you your college major at 13 yeah 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 oh my gosh when the church already has that and it's called confirmation yeah pretty you know? much but it's like a super intense version of it and it's not even official you know it's not even confirmation itself i totally forgot about that commitment ceremony at the end of the camp yeah oh, dude like... it's like low-key cringe i mean like i said it, <laughs> if it if it has an emotional effect like there's a lot of theatrics you know back then mm -hmm. because um you know the skits and activities um because i think moving young people emotionally is i don't want to say it's bad you know it, it's i think it's effective it's effective um and then i don't know i think it, it, it's interesting it's it's difficult to talk about this because to turn a young person towards christ is so beautiful so so mm -hmm. amazing it's so good for that person um but then once you get that foot in the door you know we were trusted to guide these people toward a right way of living um and all those programs like they kind of already exist in the church but i remember that one of the great things about it was that we were with other young people being guided by other young people and you know the people who give their testimonies were also our age and there's something about that that's like more beautiful than an adult talking at you you know mm. Yeah, because like that a... that way you see you see yourself and you see the potential you might have with the kind of life that you're trying to lead by being in this group and by and by seeing somebody who has either been through the situation that you're in and make it out alive mm -hmm. to tell the story. That's impactful for me, and that's that's that was something. I resonated with a lot, especially like during the big conferences, like, oh my gosh, mm. this person went through this kind of situation. I don't know. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember at this point, but like, I know somebody talked about, oh God, I know somebody talked about like going through a very difficult situation with their parents, like going through a storm type 
mm-hmm. of a rift with their parents and all that stuff. I don't remember who it was, but whoever you are, I hope you're doing well. And for me, that just, that moved me so much, so to the point where, um, once this it was a brother. Once his brother started leading the worship right after his talk, right after his sharing or whichever it was, I was on my knees crying because I'm like, I I know I don't want this to happen to me, but just the fact that this person can make it out of that deep of a situation alive and, you know, and stronger as a person, just imagine what, what I can do mm-hmm. with the guidance, with the grace and the guidance of God and yeah. all these people that sur- all these people that I'm surrounded with nothing is impossible so yeah i think that was always the most beautiful part for me too like i think it doesn't matter where you're at in life if you hear a a good a a wonderful story of someone's whose life was turned around by god um it's going to move you because it's so real the holy spirit is so real and it works through people um yeah so um i there is a lot of beauty to be seen mm. you know in in that it was like it's almost like its own little world because i do want to talk about like the cuz like i said i had a moment of clarity right there's a lot of social dynamics that you just open your eyes to because there's so much beauty there but you know the enemy the devil always tries to hide himself within things that are good and within things that are beautiful and I, I just noticed a lot of social dynamics that were just unhealthy. Um, I, this is crazy to talk about. I can't believe I'm, I, this is like the first time I'm like openly talking, publicly talking about this with somebody. Because when yeah, you're in yeah. there, you just can't, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like you're in Disney and you're, you you kind of have to censor yourself and kind of have to dance around it. And I feel like I'm still doing that. Even yeah, me too. All this time. L- dude, look at this. Away. We're on a freaking, <laughs> we're on a freaking YouTube podcast and we just, we still feel like we can't, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. I'm let's, I'm just going to try to be raw then. Yeah. It's, it, uh, it's going to hurt. It's, yeah. it, I feel it, it's going to hurt for some people to hear, but it's like, this is the reality of it. This is us on the other side of being in in the community and this was our experience whether it resonates with you or not that's your prerogative that's your opinion this is mine yeah end of story you know if yeah i don't know if it gets me canceled you know what screw it whatever i mean <laughs> now at this point I, you know I'm, I'm already you know i'm down to get canceled um <laughs> I yeah. know you have this quest to get canceled. Oh yeah, I've so talked about this on stream. Somebody. <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 I want to get canceled. I'm I'm ready to be canceled. Mm. Um Okay, so like I said, okay. there's so much beauty. I I just there's so many good things I can say and I can talk about the net good that happened, but I think that God works in so many ways. They always tell you at every camp, God works in mysterious ways. And mm. For me, there was just a moment, I must have been like 23, 24, where God was like, you need to do something else. You know, God was like, stop being a part of this. And it took me so long to answer that call and be like, no, I'm not supposed to do this anymore. You know, Hmm. Um, and people didn't get it. People are like, if you're going to say yes to God, that means you're going to say yes to this community. And that was not true for me. Right. And a lot of people see it that way. Hmm. Um, And it took me so long. And I ended up hurting people because I, I, I kept... I kept committing to things that my heart wasn't fully in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I kept saying yes to things where I knew I should have been doing something else that God wanted me to do, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm in my animation career right, right now, right? And I this is because I answered God's call. To me, the, you know, the same heart of service that I brought to those retreats, I need to bring to my career. Because ultimately, mm-hmm. in, in, in any career, in order for you to get paid, you need to serve somebody. Mm-hmm. And if someone asks me for something, like a portrait of their mom, or a portrait of their dog that passed away, like, like these things are you're 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 giving beauty to someone's life. You're serving them, um, like as an artist, like it's my responsibility to, you know, unveil beauty in people's lives, right? So for me, that is a great service that I can do in my career, and so I ha- I had to start saying yes to that and no to this other thing, um, and so that said, the social dynamics and the pressure, like, it was so intense um because i want to talk about there's there's like this 
this dynamic with like service leadership and it sort of creates a hierarchy a social hierarchy that if you're serving at this thing you're like better than other people you know like like no one ever said that because no one believes that mm-hmm. but the dynamic was there i i, I want to ask you did you feel that i did i was just actually <laughs> It just came to mind. Um, Yeah, no, I feel like it's very much real because there was a point in this. I I was just in the community during my teenage years now that I'm realizing it because I was out. I was out of it by, I think, 18 or 18 or 19, somewhere around there. And I'm 23. Um, So it's been it's been a solid time since I was last last there. But anyway, um, like I was saying, I was in I was there during my teenage years and I remember um, talking to, I remember talking to another sister about just people she's met, like experiences that she's had. And um, I just remember she mentioned a specific person and how amazing they were and all of these things, just hyping them up essentially. And I met them at a regional, at at like a regional event. And I kind of, shied away from saying hello because i held them so much at a pedestal i put them on a pedestal yeah and i was just like oh my gosh you're you're this you know seasoned experienced leader like i and i'm a newbie like i can't talk to you yeah yeah what am like what like i can't approach you right now because and blah 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 and they were hanging out with the other leaders and the Mm. other people that were in charge of that event and here we were the regular members like Mm. i Maybe not regular. No, you s- just say it. That's what it. That's how it felt. That's exactly how yeah. it felt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I, I need to stop censoring myself. That's yeah. Funny. That's exactly how it felt. We're, we can't try to be nice here. Let's be honest yeah, about no. what we experienced. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Just the, the leaders were with the other leaders, and then the regular members were with the regular members, like making friends with each other. And I wanted to talk to her, and I was like, I can't talk to her. Like she's yeah. she's up here, and I'm here. And so yes, I can very much vouch for that there was a there was an unspoken social di- social dynamic within the group and within just regular events in general that no one really mentions. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to adjust my mic because I feel like it's falling off. I'm going to mute real quick. You can talk. Okay. Um what's funny is I think it kind of was mentioned but only like in the late night you're in the dorm or you're in the cabin or whatever and people mm-hmm. are talking about it like the boy like i remember bros would be talking about like um you know how they felt they stood as a figurehead in the community or whatever as if it meant something oh. right yeah um and what's interesting what's so interesting to me is that the people who actually were leading and were serving knew and understood what it meant to have a servant's heart and they usually did have one they usually they weren't doing it for the social hierarchy they weren't doing it for esteem mm. it just, but it does feel good if you're chosen to do something right mm. and so for people who don't receive that it, it the fact that they don't feel good or they thought they could have been chosen for something it, it creates a, a small rift um that some somehow becomes a wide gaping hole of like you know i can never talk to these people right um and you can always tell who the real ones are because they really do have a servant's heart and they really will prioritize those who are on the margins those who are on the fringe you know mm-hmm. what's interesting is that at the very first youth camp i always thought thought those were the best events um because at, at people's very first youth camp they always say focus entirely on you know they used to call them candidates and we call them, then they call them participants um, mm-hmm. always focus on them, put your, all your energy into them because this is about them. And I felt those, those ev- re- events were so beautiful because it was totally outward. It was, I mean, you're not getting paid. Um, you know, you're just total giving of self to another. And I felt, you know, that's what love is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's always at these leadership retreats, formation events that that's kind of lost because, or it felt to me like it was lost because I don't know. Like it, it was it, it ended up being about us, each other, and how 
I got never mind never mind cut that out no <laughs> I, that, I mean that's I that's kind of true that's kind of true um like it's the, 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 it's very hard to describe mm-hmm. a, and navigate because it's it's there everything we're saying like this feeling there's a feeling of small bitterness that's there within us it's hard to explain and hard to justify mm-hmm. um but it's so there I, mm. For me, I call it bitterness. I don't know what you would call it, um, but for me, it's definitely bitterness there. is a good word for it. Um, I was thinking resentment, but resentment's like it's, that's it's, strong it's, too. But that's true extreme. too. Yeah, yeah, that's the extreme for me at least. Like mm-hmm. resentment is a bit extreme because I did learn something from those like leadership like retreats and yeah, you know, like those team bonding experiences, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. will. But there was still that underlying feeling of like why are we doing this and why does it feel like i'm slightly in the military right now i feel like i'm i feel like i we are taking discipline and turning it up to 4500 and that's not where Mm -hmm. i'm at Mm -hmm. and that's not where this team is at you know we need time to be ourselves and be each other because that's at the end of the day why people stay in why people stay and why people are so inclined to join because people are just themselves yeah yeah so yeah it it got super wild like the level of commitment that people had um Mm. because it really makes me wonder like i'm sure this kind of thing like i said that the community was probably a microcosm of the actual church like does this kind of thing happen in the catholic church probably with certain certain sections of you know um denominations or orders or whatever of uh priests you know there's probably all kinds of that stuff it's probably Mm. still a ton of debate on every single thing um like the content is good usually when it's well curated of course um when it's based on you know church teaching the content is usually good the spiritual formation is usually good the the connection that we deepen with god is always at the core of everything right and that's always the result that people want um but you look at the flaws of people you look at the flaws of humanity and human nature that just emerge in little you know like like little flowers or little weeds among the among the flowers um and it just those just grow i i guess to make it personal like i'm gonna you know not don't want to mention any names but to make it personal like it was really in the transition from youth to singles that it really started to bother me um because first of all if i were to serve as singles now singles young adult ministry now I would be so much better at it. Um, but, it, it, you know, I can say that, but to actually do it is another thing because I would need to free up mm-hmm. time. And the great struggle of being a young adult is is uh, is money. <laughs> you know, to be honest, yeah. like, it's yeah. finances. Like, we're, we're all poor. We're all struggling in, in the, the current economic environment. Um, we None of us have savings, really, unless you were really good about it when you were young. None of us were educated on this. Like if I were to serve young adult ministry now, I would talk about guys. Let's get our finances straight, and let's see how we can be. They, they, they call it stewardship, right, in the Catholic Church. How can we? How can we be stewards of our wealth, and how can we? How can we dignify our our labor? You know, that's like how... the, beatitudes, the beatitudes of finance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh my gosh! But but anyway, so before when I was tran- transitioning from youth to singles, um. First of all, I was always on the forefront of this stuff. I was, I was always like, man, the singles, singles community, it's like there, but it's not that, you know, it's not that big. There's only a few of them. And it tends to be that way because usually a lot of this, a lot of the singles are like, um, youth who transitioned and the, you, you end up trying to use the same strategies that worked with youth on young adults and it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Cause young adults have completely different needs. Um, yeah. what's interesting is the people that I meet that singles was their first experience and they weren't in the youth they're always oh such beautiful people and they're always like they really love it but they they already know that it's not the be all end all of their lives whereas when you're in the youth and you get form your formation happens in a certain way it kind of does become the, the be all end all of your life for some people right and uh i think making that transition was difficult because that's where i started running into the bureaucracy of the of that community um, because like there were a lot of things that you could just when you're in the youth you could just a lot of times do whatever you want but because the adults are there watching over you mm. 
you know, you don't always need their approval. They're like, oh, the kids are having fun. They're doing this and that. Um, okay, we'll just we'll just watch over it, make sure all the liabilities are signed, and you know, let it let it happen, right? But with, I think specifically for me, I ran into obstacles when I was trying to get youth to transition to older, to the to the singles, and um, I remember in it was so bad. Like I I remember what year this was, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen, and they were like, no, you're confusing the youth. Don't invite them to singles because, you know, even. Uh, it just it didn't make sense to me it did not like at, after the youth events we like um my counterpart and i would would announce singles events after the, the youth event trying to invite the older youth to come right mm. and the and the titos and titas are telling us no don't do that right mm. um and i kind of get their reasoning but at the time we didn't have campus based mm. so so from so 18 when you're 18 and you go to college, you join campus based. That we have it now in California. Mm. Um, I don't want to credit myself for bringing <laughs> campus based. <laughs> I don't want to credit myself for bringing campus based, but they have it now. They have it now, and yeah. it was a goal of mine to make that transition smooth because uh, because I ran into the bureaucracy. I don't think that's. I don't think. I don't think people realize that. So maybe some people who are in campus based might listen to this podcast. And, um, you know, to me, I saw it as a problem that this confusion was happening. Like, why are they not telling, why are they not allowing us to tell the older youth who are already experiencing like, oh, this stuff is kid stuff is not for me. Yeah. Who are, who are already experiencing that. We're, we're not giving them a way to transition into young adult Catholic formation, which is completely different. You have completely different needs. It didn't exist. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I went all the way to Texas where they have huge campus space, beautiful, wonderful campus space ministry. And I, I tried to reverse engineer it. And I was like, how, how can we take all this stuff, bring it to California and uh, make make it exist, you know? Yeah. Um, and I had to work with uh, a few people in like helping start it out. And then they need th- this is the sad part for me, because this is the, my story is that God called me out of it. At a certain time when I feel like they still felt like they needed me mm-hmm. and I felt like I had to go. I felt like it was time for me to go. Um, mm. And that was that was really tough. Uh, mm. But anyway. Um, that's when I started running, like noticing that the social it, it wasn't just the social dynamics that were problematic for me because I was always an outcast. I always felt like an outcast, right? Because I'm weird. Um, mm. But it was also the bureaucracy and the fact that some dude in the Philippines, Uncle, F- I'm not, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say names here. No, we're, we're not, we're not slander. We're, we're, we're yeah, not yeah. about this slander. I, I, no. I'm not, I, okay. I'm not trying to say names here, but some, some guy in the Philippines controls all the decision making, you know, top down, um, mm. all the content that goes through, it was starting to be really controlled. Um, mm. And we couldn't just make stuff up because it didn't fall in line. Even if it fell in line with the teachings of the Catholic Church, if it didn't fall in line with this community's documents, then we couldn't mm. we couldn't implement it. It's just it was mm. just nuts, right? Mm. So so bureaucracy was another problem. Um, yeah. Definitely. And so I, I had to step away big time. Uh, yeah. 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 Anyway, you I'm talking just... about I'm talking about my oh. story a lot. So you you go ahead. I don't know. You probably have a lot of things to say too. <laughs> It's all good. No, no. Um, it's it's good though that you kept you kept on because you did mention how um there was that unfortunate gap between the youth and the singles, and you have the people who would be in college, and that's when that's how you know um there was a there was a need for campus based, and I was in literally a couple of events, and then I dipped because. Yeah. At first, it became what I needed, which was, yes, it was us, um, it was us kids that were in the youth transitioning into college and adulthood, and us talking about our true feelings of being like, listen, um, it's I've been having a hard time, you know, um, I've been having a hard time keeping up with the faith because I have college, I have all of these things that I have to prioritize now, and you know me keeping and me keeping up with the community me keeping up with even going to church on Sundays that's becoming an issue for me i'm running into that and i need help like i need like can you guys pray for me that like is, this is a lot and i've never had 
I've never been able to talk about this with other people before. And it's so, it's just super chill. Because at that first event that I went to, I was like, this, it's just us hanging out. There's no formal structure. There's no like, oh, let's start with a worship. And then the talk happens. And then you go into your discussion groups and then the, and then you close it up with the worship and then you eat. No, it was just, we ate, we sang a little bit. We went right into talking to each other. And before I knew it, that's I just realized that the event how the event had already started. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is how it's supposed to be. This is it, this is just us being us, being the imperfect people that we are, coming together, sharing our experiences with each other and helping each other out through it the best way that we can in a time span of a couple of hours. That's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But then they tried to bring the structure back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And along with that, <laughs> again, not naming any names, but um, we ran into an issue where our tita and our, our uncles and our aunt, auntie coordinators here were very insistent on keeping this structure alive and, and very insistent on... <clears throat> How do I say this? Again, without mentioning any names. But anyway, this surprise, mm -hmm. if you will. I'll I'll talk to you about it later so I can actually name names. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cause I need to like put this into perspective and get this out. But anyway, um so somebody had just come in and you know, we never met this person before. And they were just like, Okay. Hi. Hey everybody, this is this person. You're gonna follow what they say from here on out because insert credentials here. And we're like that okay cool cool nice to meet you but we run things differently here and that's where the issue started and mm -hmm. that's where i started to drift away because i'm like yes we have our own way and i'm sure we are open to to hearing what their experiences were and how they used to run things and maybe we could come to some sort of a compromise but no the word compromise wasn't even an idea mm -hmm. in that situation it was just her hmm. it was just this person or nothing and that was it and that's where it really started to kind of not sit very much correctly with me and that's why i started to drift away because this was a place that i needed to be in this was a place where i sought sought peace and found it mm -hmm. with other people my age and who are experiencing the same struggles of you know, not being able to prioritize my time in the community as much. And they understood it because they're going through the same thing and trying to find a new perspective in us growing up in as adults in the Catholic church mm -hmm. and being able to have that perspective without trying to bring a very formal structure in because we're already in formal structures because of college or because of work or whatever it may be that is structured. We just want to be somewhere where we can be ourselves without needing to find the right words to describe anything, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, we, like, like, of course, we have to filter ourselves. Like, we have to just have a social filter on at all times, but we weren't, like, censoring our experiences in order to appease other people and, and to, like, not make other people uncomfortable. You know, it's like... In order for us to grow, we have to be uncomfortable. Mm. And we were talking about uncomfortable things like within our little discussion groups, but we can't do that with a structure in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a that was the fight of my life. That was the hill that I died on. Right. And I left after that because I'm like, this is not I'm not fighting the rest of my life just to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. Just for somebody to understand that this is a genuine experience that I'm having. And if structure is more of if your priority is structure over the growth of your kids then i'm out mm -hmm. i can't be i can't be here i can't i can't fight for who's somebody who's essentially kind of like a godmother or like a godfather to me if i have to ex explain to them why having this structure will hinder me from growing and getting out of these ruts and whatever it is in these negative experiences that i'm having if i have to fight just to be heard and just to be understood as a person as a growing person at that because you insist on having this set this person knows more than you 
type of attitude, I'm gone. I, I then mm. I don't need this. I don't want to be here if that's yeah. the way that things are going to be from now on. Yeah. This is so interesting because I always felt like the older people get, the more opinionated they get and the stronger those opinions are. But the, the worst part is that the, the more un, unwavering people are about their opinions. Um, mm. And I feel like because the structure was like a top down thing, the act like communicating with the actual top of the structure was pretty much impossible. Yeah. Um, and so there was no way to make improvements um, that way. Like there was no democratic way to make improvements because yeah. obviously the needs of, of a young adult or campus based participant in the Philippines is completely different from someone in, in America or California and someone, yeah. someone in California's needs are completely different from somebody in Texas, completely different from someone in New Jersey, completely different mm -hmm. from someone in, in Chicago. Like the needs are always going to be different and the structure of whatever um, community uh, ministry is is uh, is should be catered to whatever the needs are in that in that particular area um mm -hmm. and you know growing up I, I figured you know we figured that out in, in the youth ministry like we always ask the main question uh like what are the needs of our area what are the needs of our uh the people closest to us and we cater you know totally um creatively uh cater the content to fit the needs of whoever's there um and you know, yeah, there came a point where we couldn't do that anymore. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy, pretty sad. Um, mm. And it's just, I think it's just an unfortunate part of the structure of it because I, I feel like because I, I, you know, I was friends with a few of the few full time workers and they felt the same way. They felt mm. like you know, it's the Philippines that makes all of these decisions that we have to kind of follow, and mm. uh, I feel like that's not kind of how what should happen. Um, and then there started even to be a rift between the American community and the Philippines because the Philippines was making huge changes. I think good changes, right? Because mm -hmm. I think the changes in the Philippines, they were like, they wanted to focus more on parishes. They, they were focusing more on schools and prisons in the Philippines, having huge events for like students and prisoners, um, you know, really serving the underserved in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we're just kind of like flailing around uh, without any you know they're trying to implement structure that doesn't really work for us and with the structures in the philippines that are also not going to work for us um, and everyone's confused and it became this sort of mess of, of bureaucracy and decision making and uh it became difficult for anyone to grow for any group to grow anymore whereas in the past i wouldn't i, w I wouldn't say it was easy but i i do want to talk oh man i, I do want to talk about the fact that everyone was filipino right um that was that was like low key a problem, uh, yeah. And I mean, so when you're kids, right? When when you're a kid, you don't question it. You know, your mom takes you someplace. You see all these other people. Of course, if you're Filipino from the Philippines, you want to find people. You want to find your kin. You want to find people mm. who are like you. People who speak your language. People who eat your food. You want to be close to those people. Of course, it makes perfect sense. Mm. And then you you throw to, together all your kids who are all American. You know, they're at this point they're just all Americanized. Um, have different, you know, different culture. And then they end up all meshing together. And then, like, again, part of the social dynamic is that, uh, you know, I, I remember in the youth, they would always say, you know, don't try to stay away from cliques. And I don't think they realized they were already all one big clique, right? It, it was, that's just how it is. That's yeah. a, a reality that you couldn't avoid. Um, mm -hmm. And so if, let's say, I, I'm just going to make up a theoretical kid, right? Let's say there's some 15-year-old, white kid um and he his interests are collecting bottle caps and um call of duty right and uh he let's say he was a protestant and then he goes into this community where everyone has their memes already everyone has their uh sayings their their jargon um and it's just really tough for just anyone to enter that environment when when the community itself always preaches uh, that it's open to everyone, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's simply impossible considering how mm -hmm. it came to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think it was a problem that everyone was Filipino. I think, though, it was difficult to, uh, to kind of escape the culture and try to address, you know, the needs, the universal needs of, like, anyone who came in. And so, so the people, there's a lot of people who fell out 
just sort of naturally like they didn't even they didn't even consciously see they didn't even consciously say i want to leave but they were like like the community would often miss the mark so so far on some things that it was just impossible to kind of reach certain people because of how the culture came to be yeah because the I culture like at that point wasn't of it wasn't of god it was of whatever whatever we yeah. were yeah yeah there was always going to be a cultural gap wherever we go because like you said there the needs of one state is completely different from the other and you know there's already a natural culture over there yeah so trying to mesh all of those together and ch and trying to turn it into one blob mm -hmm. it wasn't gonna work mm -hmm. it was never meant to work i think there is a blob not kind of, i wouldn't call it a blob but the thing that always resonated with us like we mentioned earlier was always a story that someone told their own personal story of how mm -hmm. God touched them in their lives and how they were changed by that. And that is possible to relate to anybody, I believe. Um, because it doesn't matter where you come from. If you experience the grace of God in your life, you will be changed. And that that just resonates because that's the truth, right? Um, and it's so interesting because I think, I think we're kind of honing in on a theme here. Like there's there's something like, like you, you, you want to be yourself, right? You want to be mm -hmm. genuinely who you are in relationship mm -hmm. with God, but you, but you don't want to like assimilate into a culture that's trying to be something rigid, um, or something, yeah, something rigid. Like the the we we have free will, you know. There we mm -hmm. we we can be whoever we want to be. We have the freedom. I, it just came to this point where a few things not only not only could we not really make decisions on on a on a large scale but it also felt like leaving was a sin you know like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> it's like you're you have to be here and if you have a problem let's improve it but you can't improve it yeah that was a situation that just kind of, I couldn't mm -hmm. take it anymore. Yeah. It was like you tried to find solutions elsewhere, but trying to find solutions elsewhere was kind of frowned upon. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And I think the moment that I realized that was when a, um, you actually know this person, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. Um, we, were at, we were at the end of a conference a few years ago, about five or six years ago or something. Um, this person comes up to me and at the time I think we were pretty close. This person comes up to me and I said, Oh my gosh, I'm I'm gonna miss you, but let's stay in touch like we always do, da 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 whatever. And this person felt the need to like pull me to the side and you know, share the same sentiments as me and be like, Hey, um, can I actually tell you something that's really, really heavy? Um, I I'm you know, breaking their confidence and sorry, but this we're all, we're all over it, but at this rate, it's like I feel like this was such a shape, uh, a shape shifting, like a shifting moment for me, like a mm. moment that shaped me. Sorry, English, I'm a fob. <laughs> English English is not my first language, y'all. Like oh, okay. English is hard. So um, yeah. So this person felt the need to like pull me to the side and you know share the same sentiments of being like, oh yeah, I'm gonna miss you. You know, it's gonna be great. And um, I just feel like I ha like, and they started like lowering their voice, like as if whispering to me, and they're like. Um, I, I hate to like drop this news to you right now, but, um, I think this is going to be my last conference, you know, and I'm, I'm going to start to drift away from the community and like, um, I like, I'm in college now and I'm not really resonating with this anymore. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be inactive starting like oh my God. this, this like time or whatever. And I just wanted to let you know, in case you like come looking for me or something and I'm like, what and it was that that word that word that that word inactive uh -huh. and i was like huh and at the time of course like i was on the other side of it where i'm like why are you gonna be inactive like how are you gonna grow in your faith uh -huh. and then but then about two weeks later i realized like why did he feel the need to tell me to tell it to me that way yeah like why is it why does it feel like why did it feel like it was something to be ashamed 
of. Yeah, yeah. That you feel the need that you're drifting away from this community and you need to find your own, you, you need to find a new place where it's, it's still impactful for you without being stale. If that makes like my word, my word choices are not the best right now, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, you just needed to find your new place where, you know, it's sued. It's your needs are being met more than this other places go more than mm -hmm. the community and the youth has been for, for that time, you know? So that's when, yeah. So I still, I still think about that moment sometimes. I'm just like, it's just such a shame that people can't just drift away in peace. Like they feel like they have to be ashamed of finding how their needs can be met elsewhere and being hush hush about it. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, no one, no one ever talks like to me one, that way. Yeah. And once I tell you who it is, I, I, I don't, I don't think you'll be surprised about the person who, about the, the person who told me that, but it might make a difference. I mean, it'll so. make sense, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can tell me later. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, let's talk about that word and what it meant to be active and inactive, right? Active literally meant you're, you're using your entire week to prepare for the weekend, and you're there on the weekend every week, right? Yeah. That's what it meant. Like, if you miss a week, if you miss a week, people might call you inactive. Like, who, you know, like, yeah. whatever. It's, it's, it's just nuts. It's just wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, that was, like, that experiencing that community was the be all end all of of life right mm -hmm. it was just so crazy uh and i don't know how it came to be that way that's the big question for me why did it yeah. become that way why did people perceive it that way mm -hmm. um why was the word inactive used as a pejorative that that was the big question to me i mean even now it's like uh it, i mean that's like that's like cult like you know um mm -hmm. And I, I think I, I still remember some of our old like planning meetings in the youth uh, back in the day where it was like, oh, let's try to revive inactive members. You ever heard that phrase? That was like, <laughs> have you heard that one? I want to, I want to real. Yeah. That, yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, but, dude. Yeah. It was, it was just the word inactive and I was just like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really think I because with that. If because what does it mean? It just means you're doing something else. That's it. Yeah. That literally that's, that's literally all it is, right? Yeah, you're seeking for your needs. You're seeking for your needs to be met elsewhere where it's actually yeah. more fulfill, more fulfilling for you than where you were before. Well, what, I mean, what was so bad about that? <laughs> but potentially it could be better. It could be worse. Mm. It just means you're doing something else, right? You could be chilling at home just lounging around watching watching Dragon Ball Z, whatever. Yeah. You, and then they'll call you an inactive member as if you're doing the worst decision of your life. You could be doing something better, you know? Yeah. Um, like, like, come on. Like, I don't know. It was just really uh, silly to me because I think that completely misses the... I think the main thing for me is that it completely misses the point of what it means to be Catholic, right? Mm. To be Catholic means you have a relationship with Jesus uh, um, to, to receive the sacraments to go to confession, to receive the Eucharist and become closer to Jesus in every way, shape and form. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. The point is not to get a weekend event ready and in perfect structure. And in, you know, like that's, it's good to put an effort to do that, mm -hmm. but it's not bad to not. Right. Yeah. So that's that like the dine I don't know how like it's it's really a mystery to me how that emerged because it's emergent you know nobody ever set out to be to make it that way but it just happened yeah. it just ha yeah it just happened and it makes me it <laughs> it brings back it's starting to bring back like old feelings of resentment that I have because my senior year of high school um I signed up for this club called Students Run LA and mm. essentially it was us like preparing to run the LA marathon and that was always something that I wanted to do mm. because you know running a marathon you know that was it's still to this day on my bucket list um and that was my opportunity to do it because I'm like it's free it's with the school and I'm doing something you know I'm doing something healthy for myself after school but all of our like preparation runs like our 5k our 
half marathons and all of that stuff, it was always on a Saturday. So, and within the community, I was getting prepared to lead a camp. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had to, I had, I had to have a choice. I had to pick between something that was going to fulfill me in one way and something that I had been preparing for, for years. Mm -hmm. So what was I to choose? I was like, oh, you know what? I'm dropping the marathon. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, I shouldn't have dropped this damn marathon. Mm. I should not have dropped this MF marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was for fear that, you know, I was going to lose my spot as being a camp, uh, be having my one and only chance of leading a camp oh or God. having my one shot of leading a camp. Yeah. And um, <laughs> as if it's the greatest thing you could ever do in your life, right? Yeah. And eventually it was like, oh my gosh, it's going to start with camp and then it's going to turn into one of the regional, co the, one of the regional events and then it's going to turn into the big, you know, like yeah. national conference that, oh my gosh, the dream. That was not the dream for me. Like, right. Dear, dear teenage me, that was not the dream. It's yeah. not, it's, it never, it never was. It's not, it's not the dream. I promise you, mm -hmm. like, just mm -hmm. accept it. It's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, to be fair leading a camp is a is a wonderful and beautiful thing right like oh yeah it we, is we, yeah. we touch lives and we, we you you basically you know the youth camp is beautiful because it, it enables no matter what no matter what if it's um cfc or not uh in any kind of youth camp you, there's a potential there to bring youth toward god that's the point yeah right? and like i said we'll always return to that point that's what it was all about yeah. but it, when it becomes about you know doing something doing something important or like you know having it's like a, once we start attributing it to like the status of it um mm. it just completely misses the point and mm. um yeah it was never about that and it's here's this is this interesting thing that you mentioned that because for me 2013 i think for me was the most important year in my life as far as like discovering who i who i am as a person mm. um, i was 23 for most of the year and that I mean, that's a that's a big year, you know, for a lot of people. That's like you're in your early twenties, you're trying to figure stuff out. That's when I went to France um, that Ooh. year. Yeah, to study pretty much to study the saints, right? I saw the the sites of Saint Bernadette, Saint Therese of Lisieux, and most importantly for me, Saint Joan of Arc. Um, mm. And uh, I that was probably one of the best spiritual experiences of my life. You know, just mm. uh, a pilgrimage. You know, it's not a, not a retreat. A pilgrimage, mm -hmm. you know, actually going to see something, um, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of going around and seeing the sights and seeing, man, this is where the saints walked. You don't even need any words. You just go there to the, the site where the saints were. And you're like, oh, my God, this is real, you know. Mm. And we don't have a lot of that in America because we, we haven't had a lot of American saints yet where, mm -hmm. you know, we can walk where they walked and be like, oh, my gosh, this is where a saint was. This is where some miracles happen. When you go to yeah. Europe, you go to France or you go to Poland, go to the Holy Land or whatever, you can be there and stand there and be like, God is real. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, my gosh, it happened right here. Right. Some, yeah. Something like that. So I got that feeling. Um, but anyway, uh, there were a couple things that happened in 2013 for me that were really important. I want to mention two of them. The first one I want to mention was that I, I did miss that conference so i made the right choice i missed the conference in favor and a lot of people question my decision i went to evo 2013 fighting game tournament um to, to participate in the first evo that ha ever had super smash brothers melee right hmm. uh, my favorite game and I, it, it meant so much to me to make that decision because it was a huge decision for me like I, I had never missed a conference before that um since 2004 so i'd been to all of them uh youth and singles and in 2004. um yeah 2000 i joined in 2003 uh yeah, yeah. oh that's right yeah because you were there before the split okay yeah go ahead. yeah um and it was you know it was such a big part of my life serving the community being in the community um you know a lot of things happened in 20 2011 2012 like i dropped out of college i went through a breakup uh i i pretty much ghosted my best friend which which was a big mistake like a lot of things happened to me that kind of just created a lot of drama and stress in my life um mm -hmm. i fought through like a, a short depression I, I i'm not clinically depressed or anything like that but a short time of depression you know um i struggled a lot in 2012 2013 was when i was really really seeking god i was really like separating myself from all the mess everything that wasn't god and just asking god where are you 
basically. Mm. And that year I decided, you know what, it's not in the community for me. Um, uh, that's not where I'm going to find him. I'm going to find mm. him where I have developed, like, for, exa- for, for, for the record, I have been playing Super Smash Bros. since like 2002. And I, mm. what kind of Catholic would tell me that that's actually a valuable talent, right? Whatever. They're, but you can say the same thing to Jeremy Lin in basketball, right? Jeremy Lin glorifies God through his play, and he he he, he used to say that all the time. Like, um, I I try to play well, the glory goes to God, right? And I decided I'm gonna try to do the same thing. I probably won't win the tournament, but I'm gonna do it, and really make the conscious decision that I feel like God is just wants me to be here instead. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to the tournament, you know, I, I still went to mass, like I, you know, I had to ditch the event, uh, and I, you know, I found a church to go to and I'm like, I'm really a Catholic in the world now. And I really felt like I'm just being myself. I'm doing what I like to do. I'm using a talent that I developed aside, apart from the church, you know, has nothing to do with, you know, going to church has nothing to do with it. And I, I, I wanted to play, I wanted to compete and I offered it to God. And I, you know, I even took a homie with me to mass, right? Um, cause he, he, he felt like he needed to go too. And I was like, man, I'm really a Catholic in the world. I've kind of broke out for a second, you know? Yeah. And it felt awesome. And another thing that happened that year was to me, I think the, the best content <laughs> within CFC, the, the, the greatest retreat they've ever come up with, which is the honoring God weekend. Have you heard of that one? I have. Yeah. But refresh my memory because I okay. feel like I've blocked out so many. Okay, so I don't remember all the retreats, I mean, all the talks in that retreat. Um, but the I gave one of them. I gave one of the talks, and the one I remember most, which was called the Source and the Summit, um, where it's in the it's in the Catholic the catechism the catechism of the Catholic Church, where the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith, mm-hmm. meaning you know Jesus is in the Eucharist, God is Jesus. Therefore, if you eat the Eucharist you're basically consuming the entire universe. You know, you just, everything is being, is, is, is in it. God is in it. And you become one with God when you consume the Eucharist. That's, that's basically what the church teaching says, right? Um, and that's why you have to purify yourself. That's why you need to go to confession. And that's why you need to prepare yourself to ha- receive the Eucharist because the Eucharist is the most important thing in our faith, right? It's mm-hmm. the most important thing because Jesus, Jesus' life isn't fulfilled unless you connect yourself with him through the Eucharist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so when I gave that talk, I'm like, all this mess leads to this. Everything that we struggle through, everything that we, that we went through, all the problems that we faced, it, it can be forgiven. It can, you know, we can accept it. Um, but as long as you can go to confession and as long as you can receive the Eucharist, you're good. That's like what, that's what he wants, right? Mm-hmm. And so I stopped worrying about everything. And I was just like, this is the meaning of life. And as long as I have this, I don't need anything else. Now, this is why I say that CFC in my life was successful. Because Mm -hmm. it took 10 years, but I I learned the meaning of life (laughs) through the community, right? The meaning of life is to be to to be with Jesus, right? That for me, for me at least. Um and I feel that it should be that way for all Catholics, right? Yeah. Uh, and it took me a while to learn that, but then I realized all the culture, all the bureaucracy, all the social dynamics that I had a problem with, those are human problems. And what we're seeking is like perfection, right? Mm. And perfection doesn't come from people trying to act a certain way or run things a certain way. The perfection comes from like finally discovering that you know this is where you're, th- this is what you're supposed to be doing this is what this is the meaning of life really mm-hmm. yeah yeah dang dude i never knew this about you what yeah i mean i mean we never really talked until now so right this right, is great yeah. i love i i love it because i'm seeing my own reflection in you know the way that you, in in your story but obviously in my own experience um for me, the biggest realization that I, the yeah, the biggest realization, like th- my aha moment really was that just how different it is that I resonate with my relationship with God more outside in the silence, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I don't, there's a, ver- I, there's a verse, I can't think about it right now, but um, 
it's it's the one that says um talk to your like pray to your father in silence or like in the secrecy of your in the secret of your room or something like that mm -hmm. something about praying to your father in secret there you go that's the one and for me you know all those big charismatic worship mo like worship breakout moments that we would have all the you know the all the spontaneous like worshiping of our god because i felt like i still was very much like thinking with my human brain mm -hmm. and being like I need to think about what it is that I have to say to God right now, even though he already knows what it is that I have to say about him. And it wasn't until like I started going to adoration more and genuinely just being there and not being showy for other people to be like, oh, it's okay for me to cry at this moment. It's okay for me to understand that God's talking to me right now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I was just in the room present with God that I'm just that I figured out what it is to be a true Catholic for myself. Yeah. You know, what it is to be, to be a Catholic for me. And it's to just, to just be. And that's what I need. And that's, that was a hard hitting lesson that I needed. That's like, yes, it was a stepping stone. Like the community, being in the community and having that time of my life was a stepping stone for me to get, to get to where I am now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, I don't listen, like, I don't listen to Hillsong anymore. I don't listen to any of the, <laughs> the Christian artists that I used to listen to, you know, because uh, I'm like, that reminds me of a time where, that reminds me of that time. Yeah. And that part of myself still resonates with it. But me as a whole, I, I'm just here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just being myself. I'm just mm -hmm. being who I am and being where I need to be. And I just let God in because yeah. that's, essentially what it is it's just letting god in and letting god speak to you because having a conversation with god a conversation is too it goes it's a two-way street you could tell him all you could tell him everything that you want but if you don't let god talk how are you supposed to get the answers that you're looking for and that was the hard the hardest hitting question that i think somebody asked me or somebody mentioned in either their talk or like they're sharing or whatever and i was like you know what you're right so i'm gonna shut up now mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm gonna shut up and let god talk because that's the most important thing really for me yeah and also it was um there was a point where i like was so ashamed of my sin as a human mm -hmm. and i couldn't go up to a priest and like to the point where i couldn't go up to a priest to talk about it because i was so ashamed because I've also, you know, experienced some bad things within the Catholic Church that's like separate from the youth or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, based on my experience with the youth, we didn't really like practice the sacraments together besides, you know, besides communion. You know, I had to teach a couple of the brothers how to do confession, essentially. Mm -hmm. And their statement to me, which was really, really, <laughs> it just bamboozled me at the time because I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, what was that supposed to mean? And this person said, and I quote, hey, you're more Catholic than me. Can you teach me how to do confession? And I said, <laughs> what do you mean? You just talk to the guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you just go in and you say, hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, Father, these are my sins. I'm sorry. This is what happened. And you can dive deep into it. It's like therapy. It's mm -hmm. free therapy. Yeah. Oh, yeah definitely like that's yeah that's essentially what confession was yeah. and in wow. one of my relate yeah it's free what therapy. a great way to describe it <laughs> because yeah. it's so accurate Confe yeah <laughs> yeah confession is literally free therapy yeah because you, you know the priest is like it's he's obligated to not talk yeah oh my god i never i never anyone. thought about it that way so because there are times where i feel like i need therapy but now that but I'm, I, I keep saying like well they're not catholic and i'm gonna have to pay and i don't know if my health insurance covers it but now that you said it that way, I'm like, okay, I need to go to confession way more often now. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's free. Th it is. That's it. And please like quote me on this. Oh Con yeah. Confession is free therapy. Just uh, take it. Yeah. Um, And if you think the priest is judging you, he's not, he's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's yeah. another thing that it took me a long time to learn that the priest is not there to judge you. And the, the experience that I had with a former relationship that I had that brought me to confession the most. That was the situation that brought me to confession the most. And that's when I really realized that, you know, this, this is it. Like, this is you practicing the sacraments, although you're in a very tough situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what it's about. Yeah. You're in a tough situation. You're seeking help and you're 
talking to God about it. And I felt like we don't really talk about just how how much that that kind of a situation shapes you mm -hmm. in our community. And I feel like that needs to be talked about more. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. That that's um that's really the point of it all, right? Yeah. I mean um I'm sorry, just your thing about confession really uh <laughs> it's it's just yeah, I'm just kind of thinking about it. Yeah, no same. Um, and it's been hard because COVID. I'm, I'm oh, like, right, right. I have time yeah, yeah, time limits. Like, there's a time limit now on confessions yeah. and I'm and I like to to dish with yeah, yeah. the priest and I'm like, "Listen, Father, this is what happened. I need you to explain to me why I'm like this." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I haven't made a confession in a while. Same. I actually got a book from one of the sisters uh, called The Seven Secrets of Confession. I really want to read it. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Uh, okay, so now that we're here, because now we, when we're talking about this, we sound so peaceful and joyful because it's like we've rediscovered the actual point of it all, you know, the meaning yeah. of why we're, why we're Catholic to, to begin with. Now, mm -hmm. the question arises, did I need to be in CFC? Did I need to be in that community to reach this point? I don't know. But do I think that the community accelerated me to this point? Yes. So I would mm -hmm. say, like I said, it's a net good. It's done a net good in my life. Because did I need other people to introduce God to me? Probably, yeah. Because mm -hmm. what, what other way is there? So I'm happy that there was a dedicated community, especially to young people, that say, hey, uh, introduce God to you. Um, this, is, this is God. This is Jesus. This is what you can do to meet them, basically. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know... Uh, it's almost like we have the, the youth camp talks memorized, like who is Jesus Christ to me, right? Um, God's I, love I and his plan for us. Too. Yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> given, I've given them all at this point several times, right? Yeah. So it's like um, repentance, faith, healing, and forgiveness. <laughs> the, the power of the Holy Spirit, growing in the Spirit, right? It's, it's, it's Trinity-based too, now that I think about it. Your Father, Son, and Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. It's a very beautiful retreat. It's very mm -hmm. well-crafted. Well yeah. Um, it's very good. Um, and then there's also the uh, this, the Young Adults uh, Discovery Weekend, another beautifully crafted retreat, which is uh, the five P's, discovering your power, uh, discovering your pain, your passion, your pleasure. Have you done that retreat? I don't think I have. Oh, okay. That's a good one, too. It's like discovering yeah. your pain, your passion, your pleasures, your purpose, and one more. I forgot the fifth, the fifth one. Um, mm. But it's, it's a very introspective retreat where you just ask these you ask a bunch of questions to yourself, like, who are you? It's great for young adults, especially kids getting out of high school and going to college, because it's basically asking you, what do you want to do with your life? And mm -hmm. how, how do you integrate that with your, with your Christian life? It's a very beautiful retreat. So like I said, okay. there's a lot of wonderful content that the community has mm -hmm. to offer. Um, oh, yeah. And to be honest, to be very honest with you, the, the reason I left is not because of the problems. The reason I left is because I felt I had to. I, I, I don't think... Because I hurt a lot of people's feelings, right? But because I, I ended up saying yes to things that I couldn't fully commit to. That that was mm -hmm. like one big thing that I shouldn't have done. I should have said no. I, I was really kind of a yes man there that at that time. I should have said no, I don't have time for this anymore. And because I don't mm -hmm. think people realize how poor I was and how how I couldn't afford my health insurance and I was getting old and um I failed at a college and you know, like I, I wanted to get married and I was in a relationship and how am I supposed to possibly keep up with all this, with all the mistakes I've made in the past? And so in order to make up for all of that and also pursue my relationship and get married was to get my act together. And I had zero time left for, for um, service in that community. That's the reason mm -hmm. I left. If I didn't have that, if I didn't have those needs, I would still be there. I think I would still be there trying to get in the trenches, trying to improve it. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish... I, I, I can hope I can say that I wish I was still there trying to help um mm. but considering the bills you know of real life considering real life responsibilities this to mm. me my marriage is more real than than anything I can find there right this is my this is my service now to my wife and to future family and to my current family my in-laws you know my, my family like I've become more family oriented you know thank God that's good mm -hmm. um but yeah Ultimately, I do think young people need to branch out from their own families and kind of see the world 
and kind of see mm -hmm. what it's like to meet other young people and and also meet other young people that do want to love God. Um, so that's good. That's important. But then it's almost like we have it's almost like some kind of like odyssey, some kind of adventure that you go on and then you mm -hmm. return from for me. That's how it was for me. Some people, I'm sure it's a it's like a couple of retreats and then you're out or or, or it's like you do stay in there as they say womb to tomb or whatever um mm -hmm. you know it, it it's different for everyone but as i think like i said the main point as long as you return to the the core of your faith which is the sacraments living a sacramental life and because the sacraments are how you get in touch with god directly right um mm. and there's there's no other way <laughs> as far as catholic catholic living goes there's no other way um mm -hmm. So as long as you return to that, then it served its purpose. Um, mm. And so I'm happy. I'm also happy that even though it was I needed it and it was good for me, I'm also happy that I escaped the things that weren't of God. Mm. Yeah. I feel that. I yeah. feel that. Yeah. As as I I hate the fact that I yeah sure. I, I'll use that word. I hate the fact that I left because of the inner problems that we were having and because I just couldn't handle having to fight to be seen mm -hmm. at, at that, especially at that time where I, I'm in college, you know, and I'm already having an existential crisis every other week. This didn't make it any better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very thankful for the experiences that I had and the people that I've met, of course. Like I'm still close to a lot I'm still close to a lot of the people and a lot of the friends that I've made in including you, of course. Yeah. Um within the community and you know, I love seeing the growth that we have had outside of it as individuals and as friends because we've all thrived in different ways and um I I think in analogies and so um us branching out just from daily life and just what we knew was regular it's essentially like a college student traveling abroad and studying there yeah. for a bit yeah and you know learning so much and you know bringing back and bringing it back to where you were to where you were before and just seeing everything in a completely different perspective and you know it always comes back to where to why you even went there in the first place and for me it was trying to discover what it is to, what it is like to have a relationship with God and how to succeed in that department and not even just to succeed and how I can keep growing in that direction mm -hmm. and how I can serve other people. Yeah. As a, yeah. As a child of God, like how can I serve other people? How can I be a reflection? And now, and now the question that I have is how can I be, I, I have for myself. Sorry, and just to clarify that, it's like, how can I be a reflection of God's love to other people without without scaring them off? You know, because right now, be you know, Christianity as a topic in general, it's very triggering for a <laughs> lot of people. Oh yeah, and and you know, I'm dancing around it and whatever. But this is, but now I don't. I'm not censoring myself per se. I'm fil I'm and I am sure filtering myself, but I'm approaching it in a more calm a calm and more of like a I guess worldly manner, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I think in analogies. So I try to, you know, embrace the secular world in one way, shape, or form, but without letting that consume me and me becoming of simply of the world. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense i yeah. hope that makes sense <laughs> no definitely i mean god created the world right god created everything and called it good right so yeah. i i think that evil and what people call secular is just it's still god's creation and then people just use it however they want to use it right um, yeah whether, whether and it's the people's choices that make it good or not good um ah, there was something i was going to say but i forgot what were you saying again something about uh, secular how god created the world um, going back to the roots and yeah. why you started the thing in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're traveling abroad. Yeah, you said all that. I forgot about school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I remember now. I remember. Oh, got it. Okay. You said something. <laughs> you you said something about triggering people, and it made me smile. Because that's what yeah, I. Yeah, I saw do. that. I was like, <laughs> I want to trigger people all day. Mm -hmm. 
all day. I just want to trigger them. You're trying to get canceled at this I want to troll rate. them. I want to get canceled. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk crap. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think this was a great conversation because it, it reminds me that, you know, we wanted to talk about this topic and flesh it out because there's mixed feelings, right? We're not saying this was bad, period. And we're not mm -hmm. saying this was good, period. Because there are obvious goods that we got from it. And there were obvious, I would say, evils that needed to be corrected. And that we didn't really have the power or resources to correct. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, imperfections, I would say. Because we, we talk often, I mean, the whole podcast is called Getting Good, right? It's always been about, like, self-improvement. And this was mm -hmm. a topic I really wanted to get into with you because what is a religious life besides self-improvement, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a question we always ask ourselves. Like, ultimately, when you have a relationship with God who is perfect, you're going to be asking yourself, what can I do to be better? Not necessarily perfect, but what can I do to be better? And that's mm -hmm. what this entire podcast is about. And I needed to talk about this with somebody because we're Christian and I haven't talked about my faith very much. Um in the podcast yet and mm -hmm. uh yeah uh, like we had that outlet for a long time and now we're here living our lives and still catholic and mm -hmm. uh, and we were assisted by a certain community of people some mm -hmm. people some people are still in it still in the trenches working hard thinking about the same things there are probably a number of new problems that we haven't even experienced because we've been away from it yeah, and there are probably a number of people trying to address those problems. There are probably a number of things that have if that have improved, but you know we're, I'm not in there anymore. I still have a ton mm -hmm. of friends who are, but here I am. At least I can be here and reflect on that time, and be mm -hmm. like, these these things bore fruit in a really profound way, and these things did not. These things really kind of messed me up in a certain way, right? And yeah. it's good to be honest about that. I'm happy yeah. I can. Yeah. Same, same here for me because I, um, going back to confession because I feel like can, if it's my favorite sacrament, yeah. I'll be honest, like mm -hmm. it's it's truly my favorite because I get to be vulnerable and I'm having a problem with that right now, like well not necessarily a problem, like I'm running into an issue. Yeah, fuck it, you're, oh sorry. <laughs> no, we can we can cuss, we can cuss. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been holding that in, but yeah, no, I'm I'm having it. I'm having a problem with being vulnerable with people again because of like the social isolation because we're in a freaking pandemic. Uh -huh. And um, you can say fucking. Oh, I'm just kidding. Maybe it, maybe it wouldn't <laughs> you you maybe it wouldn't have fit. Maybe it, maybe you didn't need that strong of a word. But, no, you know. I'm good. It was just it was just in that moment. <laughs> the moment's gone. It's gone. Okay. All right, all right, all right. The moment's gone, Dre. It's good. We're good. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to get canceled, you know. Oh my gosh, you and you and being canceled, I swear, dude. You Cancel and cancellation, dude. Cancellation I nation. Ca there you go. That that should that that should be the name of your your Discord. <laughs> the new the new podcast. <laughs> cancellation nation. Cancellation Let's nation. bring people gonna... on. Tell me your worst things about yourself and get canceled. True. Like I'm gonna like we're having uncomfortable conversations and I'm getting canceled for it. This is day one. Day one, um, baby. <laughs> well, um, like I was saying, like confession, um, confession is my favorite, and mm. I'm having, and yes, I'm having a hard time being vulnerable right now. But that reminds me of the the beauty of vulnerability, and it it's also a constant reminder to me that, um, and I feel like I wish I could scream it to the mountaintops. So people, not even just like Catholics, just people in general can understand that just meet God where you are and he'll take it from there. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot oh, of yeah. people that, um, a lot of people that I, whether they were formerly Catholic, Christian or whatever, they were always like, oh my gosh, like, I don't think I can go to confession. I don't think I can talk to God. I don't think I can pray to God because I'm X, Y, and Z. I've done many, many bad things in my, my mm -hmm. life and it's like, okay. and and what yeah. you think that you think god's gonna send you to hell for the things that you've done yes of course like there's extents to that and that's a whole different conversation on morality and mm. um whether it is that you're gonna end up in heaven or hell or whatever but it's mm. like your sins your sins and who you are as a bad person um air quotes for people who are listening 
it's not that it doesn't matter to God, but it's like that they are so little compared to the love that he has for you, whether you mm -hmm. believe that or not. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people need to like really just drill in, drill it into their heads that just meet God where you are. Just say, hey, I did a thing. Um, sorry. That there, there yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I felt like, um, you know, on the outside looking in, that was the biggest one of the biggest um, lessons that I needed to learn is because um, being in the community, I felt like I needed to uphold an image. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. myself. And I had to watch. I had to. Yeah, I, I essentially had to, like. Censor myself in a very small way, I had to watch what I say, I had to watch what I yeah. dress and what I would what I would think in general. And I that's not fair to ask yeah. of a young child who is still forming their own opinion. Mm -hmm. And so, and yeah, and especially, you know, moving up as a leader, you know, we had to be, we had to achieve some sort of, some branch of perfection because people looked up to us. And it's like, yeah. I would look up to somebody who sinned a great lot more than somebody who's perfect. Yeah. Because they know where they fall short. They know how to take account of their of themselves for it mm -hmm. and they know how to fix it or they know how to at least take the steps to fix it whereas the most perfect person you can think of they're clean like mm -hmm. they're too clean mm -hmm. they're suspiciously clean and how am i supposed to learn from somebody who's already suspiciously clean mm -hmm. right i'm just saying yeah so, that's yeah, that's, that's totally right yeah. um there was a kind of a weird experience i had uh Cause I was like the, like the leader of my area. I don't know where, I don't remember what they called it. They called it clusters or chapters back then, whatever. I don't, I don't know the term, terminology, but I was leader of my area and I, I had to step down and I was trying to get, pick someone else to transition, uh, mm -hmm. to take my place. I picked someone, they said yes. And I brought it to the parents in the area and they disagreed with me. They disagreed with my choice. And I was like trying to defend it. And ultimately they were like, no, we feel that this other person is better suited. And I was like, okay. So then I brought it to the person I picked and they said, oh, this is what people said. And he was like, okay, yeah, I kind of felt the same way too. Maybe he thought he wasn't ready. Maybe he just felt rejected. I don't know what he was feeling when I told him that. And then I ended up picking someone else. And then that, you know, that it worked, you know, with the, with the other person that was picked. But it makes me wonder, like, why are we trying to choose people who we see as better qualified? Because um, the reason I made my choice is I, I felt, you know, this person had passion. This person really had a heart. Um, I don't know if it was the right choice. But ultimately, we as humans make choices and then God takes over. You know, we, we entrust it to God. And that, that's what I felt that I did. And I, I just felt maybe the way it happened was right. But I realized, like... It's really difficult to to navigate an environment where people are constantly evaluating each other. Mm. I think that's kind of what it was for me. Like, why can't we just get, you know give somebody a chance or give somebody because because there's it's crazy because like we talk about how growing up when you're especially when you're a teenager there's almost like this reward system or incentive system, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's kind of set up where I mean we mentioned this already, but when you get to serve at something, you're you're like better or whatever, or you you have a status. Um, and to be fair, I mean, status comes from the structure. You do need leaders, and the way it's set up is good. But then the status part of it, the social status part of it, and the way people evaluate you based on your performance, like because that's kind of always on, you can't turn it off. That's the one of the reasons why it ends up being that we feel the social pressure to be perfect. Now. Mm -hmm. Once I broke out of that and start trying to be a Catholic in the real world, right? Um, quote unquote real world as if it's some kind of other world, right? Because that's what it feels like. It feels like it's some kind of other separate world. Um, yeah. But once I start trying to be a Catholic in the real world, of course, we still have the same responsibility to represent our church, represent Christ in the world, which we try to do, I'm sure. Um, but it's different because I feel that I'm no longer being constantly evaluated 
by people who are going to choose me or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's more that I know God is with me. I know God is watching me. And that's the only really judge I need to go by. Um, because if I commit a sin, it's clearly a sin and God will punish me for it unless I go to confession, right? Um, and if I do something good, I didn't do it for the people who are watching me. Mm. And, 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 and I can be at least separate from some kind of, uh, social reward system that's kind of set up in whether people intended to set it up or not, it's there. And, uh, mm. I can kind of be free from that. It's a good way to put it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dang. I think we're good. I think I think I let most of it out. Of course, <laughs> I, it just feels like there's a lot of feelings there that I just have processed over time and finally got mm -hmm. to talk to someone about it with. But um, it's funny because my wife went through almost the exact same thing as me because we were we were together, like serving together a lot in the singles, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she would really agree with a lot of stuff i'm saying because i don't know mm. it was it was tough mm. it was tough and it's great for me to hear this from somebody who isn't my age and because we've we've <laughs> all experienced the same thing like we all parallel the same experiences but um i liked hearing it from your perspective as well mm. i appreciate this conversation. are you saying i'm old no no <laughs> how old are you again 23? i'm 23 nice 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 I'm yeah. 23 as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 23, guys. The denial. <laughs> the denial. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was 23 during. Actually, that was the most. I mentioned the number 23 earlier. I, I forgot that you were 23, but yeah, I was 23 when I went through the most important format of years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm. I feel like that. That stage of my life is just around the corner and i mm -hmm. i'm not ready for it but i'm also gonna face it head on because i think i think i ran into like a video that said just you're never gonna be fully ready for anything oh yeah so do it do it scared if you have to but you're never gonna be fully ready for anything so just go yeah that's so true yeah yeah, yeah. that's i i think you can apply that to the faith too it's like you're never really ready to be the perfect person and you're never gonna be a perfect person so just tell yeah. god what's wrong with you like dude i, I want to briefly mention saint joan of mm -hmm. arc my inspiration i did mention oh, her please. earlier yeah please, I, I love her story beautiful story um but i i just want to mention her age because mm -hmm. so uh, first i want to mention the thing she did right mm -hmm. she was called by god at a young age to to be a part of the army basically to lead the army, to basically save France, to drive out the English, to have the French Dauphin, who was the, the, the heir to the throne, to crown mm -hmm. him king. And back in those days, coronation was a sacrament. Um, you mm -hmm. had to have a bishop do it, to have the holy oil anoint the king and, and crown him as king. That's a sacrament mm -hmm. back then. So the king is a divine position because um, it was monarchy, like a Catholic monarchy back, back then. And back then they had all kinds of... Uh, throne disputes and stuff. That's why the Hundred Years' War happened. And Joan of Arc is a little girl trapped in all this mess of throne disputes. And God told her, the French king is the true king of France and the, the invaders are not. And what you need to do is take your take the army and make sure that, you know, the rightful heir to the throne is crowned and that you drive out the invaders, right? Um, so that, that was like the purpose of all of it, right? And so it took her a while. It took her a few years before she answered God's call. She said, yes, she said yes to the call. And she, you know, she had to get people's approval. So she went to all these uh, captains and all these bishops. And she's like, this is what God told me. First of all, how much bravery does it take to do, do that? And second of all, like everyone was laughing at her at first. Like, oh, my dude, this is a crazy. This girl is psycho. Go back home, you know, telling her dad to like punish her. You know, like this girl is just a, a whack job, right? Mm -hmm. um, she ends up getting reviewed by a bunch of priests and they're like, she is of sound mind. We believe that whatever prophecy she's telling could be real. Um, and let's listen to her and let's give her the resources. And they're like, okay, we're, they gave her the army. They made her a general. Just completely nuts. Like just this kind of story. Um, and she actually succeeded 
in in uh, all those battles. She never lost really lost a battle until she reached a certain point, and then she felt like she kind of went through a darkness where she felt that God wasn't speaking to her as much, and um, then she was finally captured, and then she was tried and executed. Right. So she did her ministry very close to Jesus' life. Actually, she did her ministry, and um, she did what she needed to do. There were a lot of miracles that happened, and then she was captured, and then she was tried and executed. Now, that's a great story. And then now I just want to mention she was 13 when she was first called by God. She was mm. 17 when she accepted it. And she was 19 when she was, when she was killed. So, like, that for me just puts into perspective, like, I'm 31, right? I've been through a lot of life. Mm. And I feel that my calling, like, my only calling in life as an artist is to tell that story, that same story I just talked about in anime, right? That That's the only thing, that's like the point of my life. I feel like once I do that, I'm done. Like I'm done, I can just die, yeah. right? Mm. I, of course, I'm not going to die. I feel like after I make the film, because I do want to make the film, I don't care if it takes me 20, 30 years. If I make that film, I'm going to become a teacher. I'll, I'll become, I'll just teach how to, people how to how to draw. Um, I kind of low-key want to make like two or three more movies after that, but that's like the one that I want to do, right? Yo, that's um, sick. Yeah. <laughs> I discovered this path when I was 23. Um, and it's it's been a struggle since then because I learned the, the realities of being a starving artist and the realities of personal finance in this mm. in this day and age. It's very hard to be a young adult. Um, but that's mm. still the dream, right? Because I just want to show people that it doesn't matter how old you are and it doesn't matter what the bureaucracy is saying. It doesn't matter all the, you know, how the world is, how dark it is. If you see god's call and you answer it you could do something great and i want that story to be spread to all to everyone um mm. uh, because you know there have already been plenty of movies and plays about joan of arc but i feel like if it's anime a lot of people will see it a lot of people will see it if it's anime it's unique so, yeah yeah because there yeah there like you said there are already a lot of live action christian movies yeah but an anime an about anime. Joan of Arc. Dude, it's the sickest idea Dude. ever, right? It's the sickest idea <laughs> yeah. ever. I actually, um, I remember, um, well, not, I remember, but um, I think I re- the one of the first few times that I ran into your, um, that I ran into your Twitch stream and reading mm-hmm. your description in one of your panels about wanting to make a movie about Joan of Arc, mm-hmm. I honestly thought it was going to be a live action movie. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's awesome. That's yeah, very yeah. much you. But you re-explaining all of that yeah. and you wanting it to be an anime? Yeah. Bruh. It's funny because, I mean, if I could, if I had the resources and talent and experience to make live action, maybe I would. But I think mm-hmm. God made it in such a way that um, I'm good at drawing instead. And mm. drawing for animation is way cheaper than hiring a bunch of actors and getting a bunch of armor. Lord, I don't know how many billions of dollars Lord of the Rings cost, right? Maybe oh, not God. billions, but millions of dollars. And mm. to to honestly tell the story of Joan of Arc would would require the budget of Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. But to make it an anime is quite a bit cheaper. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you can make anything possible. Yeah, yeah. Because you're drawing it. It's yeah. literally in your hands. Yeah. Plus, I also feel that it's impossible to find an actress that could play Joan of Arc. I feel it's impossible because mm-hmm. the the beauty of her story, I think, can only be captured with kind of my idea of what she might look like. Kind of an idealized mm-hmm. person. Kind of like yeah. how they, they draw Jesus. I mean, not I don't want to say, you know, white Jesus or whatever, light skin. But when you draw Jesus, it's never going to... It, it it probably captures who Jesus is maybe a little bit more accurately than an actual if we took if we were to take a photo of him right because if you were to take, mm-hmm. if you take a photo it would kind of show just like a regular dude and maybe that's maybe that's what we want maybe we do want to see the face of Jesus like what he looked like mm-hmm. as a regular dude probably some mm-hmm. regular dark skinned dude huge mustache I don't know what Jesus looked like he's probably you know five mm-hmm. he's probably my height or shorter who knows you know knows? people yeah. were short back then um, maybe that is what we want to see. But I also think that the imagery, the iconography of the saints and of Jesus is important because we need to be, we need to see the good things about them. Mm. And I think you have a, a, a girl, she's a virgin, she's French, 17 years old. She's going to be beautiful, right? So mm. I, I, when I draw her that way, I feel like I have to draw her better, better looking than any actress I could ever find. Um, and if I have a person to be her voice, they have to be like really young and have a really sweet, gentle voice of a, a like a like a young teenage girl. Um, 
because that's really what she is to me. She's like a young girl. Like if she wasn't called by God, she would just been some some random peasant, right? Um, so that's why I want her story to to be told because it shows it really shows the power of God in a in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel Very like young it, girl. yeah, yeah, and it it that her story really resonates with me because I feel like I've always you know meant to do something big. You know, God really gifted me with a a great family, um, a lot of resources, a lot a lot of talent. And mm-hmm. I feel like telling her story really maximizes what I can do with my talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like her, her life, I don't want to say it parallels mine because obviously it was way more grandiose than mine. But I think all of the lives of the saints parallel us in that they were regular people called by God to do something. They said yes, and then they did it. And to mm-hmm. me, saying yes means telling her story, really, like telling someone <laughs> an- a story of another saint. You know, yeah. So, because we're all called to be saints, right? Mm-hmm. And whether it's through CFC or not, God is going to tr- reach us if He really wants to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, if we let Him in. Yeah, exactly. And th- I think that's the key, because God, uh, God always does His part. He yeah. always like tries to get you, and it's yeah. a matter He's of you seeing it. Yeah, it's a matter He's of us seeing it. Door. Yeah. And saying yes. Yeah, and yeah. that's the important part of it all. It's like He's doing His part. Yeah. have we done our own so i want to ask you like a almost like a discussion group question back at you <laughs> what do you feel that Bruh. he's calling you to do what do you feel that he's calling you to do right now right now yeah oh my god dude i don't know i'm resonating with a lot of things right now twitch being one of them i feel like you know me i don't know i feel very much like myself that's the most me I've ever felt in a long time was starting a Twitch stream, although it was cooking, you know, I don't, I'm not there anymore. You know, Mm -hmm. I like playing games and I like co-working with people and providing a safe space for people. So that's that outside of that. I'm looking into like portrait photography right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm in like seven different directions right now, honestly, but I think what I'm going to try to follow right now is that portrait photography version of, that portrait photography side of what it of what it is that god's trying to call me to Mm -hmm. because journal uh, i hate to be i hate that i've already become a person who's already planning on not using their degree (laughs) i don't resonate with journalism at all okay (laughs) journalism is great and the things that i've learned and you know being a voice for the people i think that's what i took away from it the most is that we are a voice of reason not even a voice of reason we are we amplify the voices of people who don't have a voice for them and we're here to tell the truth the truth we're there to tell a story i'm going to tell my story through portrait photography if that's what i have to do Mm -hmm. that's it and also podcasting i i'm like resonating a lot with podcasting here now dude podcasting sick podcasting sick it's so cool if you start your own just have me on have me on oh i i I have a podcast (laughs) oh you do Oh, you have one I already? Do. Oh, snap. I do. Plug it right now. Let's go. It's called TY. It's called TY Old Self. It's Thank You Old Self. We talk TY about like Old our... Self. Yeah, I stream it. So I stream it live oh. first, and and then you, you like know, upload just... the archive or something. Yeah. Oh, I see. I I you edit gotta... out like the gaps and stuff like that. Link you me wanna... to it. I'll put it in the description of this video. Yes. Okay, I'll do it later. <laughs> yeah, just send it to me on Discord, and then I'll link it. Sure thing. Ty old self though. Shout out to that's T-Y-L. that's a nice title. I'm I'm happy that podcasting as a medium is really taking off because there's something really important about it, right? Because we grew mm-hmm. up, and and people always talk about their problems with social media and how it's like it messes up your brain, it messes up your attention span. Everything's in sound bites. And the great thing mm-hmm. about podcasting that it has really emerged as a popular medium these days is because you get to sit down and have a long form conversation, and you have time to really flesh out your thoughts. Because mm-hmm. there's no possible way. We could talk about our feelings about our past lives in CFC through a tweet, through a single tweet, right? It's yeah. just going to sound like we're talking crap, right? Yeah. But we need to, we need to mm-hmm. be able to sit down and like navigate what what was good, what was bad, you know, mm-hmm. what what we needed, what we didn't need, stuff like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so podcasting is great. When it, yeah, and when it comes to podcasting, and if you're doing it in person, it's just you, a microphone, a per, another person, and a microphone. It's just yeah. the two of you in a room, like that, like. What else are you supposed to do besides yeah. bring something to the table to talk about, flesh it out from there? Mm-hmm. You know, we're just hashing out like ideas. 
Yeah. You know, and it's allow again, it's the whole vulnerability thing. Like you're allowing the both of you to be vulnerable with each other, if even for a moment. Yeah. I, I was really, really excited to have this podcast because I pretty much only had gamers. That's mm-hmm. I mean, that's another reason I had Audrey on because like um she wasn't I didn't meet her through Smash <laughs> Smash Bros. Right. <laughs> because pretty much everyone else I had on the podcast previously was like uh, I met them through gaming community. Pretty much almost hundred percent of them, I, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the term getting good comes from like what gamers say, they say, get good. Right. Th- but they say it kind of as an insult, like get good kid or something, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, get good. Like that. What else is there? Right. Getting good is like a really good thing to do. So I'm going to call yeah. my podcast getting good, even though people told me to get, get good. Right. I love it. You're yeah. taking something that was intentionally negative and finding and finding the good out of it and using that to fuel yeah, you where yeah. you need to go that's the best way to go about it yeah i think get good is awesome when people tell each other to get good i'm like yeah dude of course <laughs> of course get good you know <laughs> yeah like of course what like, like what what do you expect what else do you want me to do yeah exactly come worse from here <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's like of co- dude like what else am i supposed to do <laughs> i think the reason people say it is they're just like i'm better than you type thing but that's mm. not how i see it anymore it's like a get on my level kind of thing. And it's like, no, yeah. I, I don't want to be on your level. I want to be better than you. Exactly. Eventually. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And there there might come a time like 20 years from now where I look back at this particular podcast I listened to it and be like, man, I was wrong about a lot of things. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But who knows? Yeah. But that's yeah. that's the important thing about this is that we 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 hash out our ideas and look at where we're at. Um, And again, going back to our main topic, CFC, it's like when we were there we were at a certain place in our lives and we wanted to get good like we wanted to be better we really wanted it badly right Mm -hmm. and that's why we went through the things that we did Mm -hmm. um and that's why it brought us here because we still have that desire and we still acknowledge that we have weaknesses and shortcomings and sins that we still want to eliminate from our lives of course but it's all part of the process getting good like that's why i think the even the title of the podcast getting good it's like that's just that's even in my Christian life, that's that's all it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because God You're is good, constantly right? So, working on yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what what Always. is the source of all goodness, right? God, mm. God is the source of all goodness. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think we're good. I don't know if there's Same anything way. else you want to say. Any more, any more plugs or shout outs you want to say? No, I'm good. Um, yeah. uh, just at Nadinosaurus on all socials except for Snapchat. I'm not giving away my Snapchat. That's for me. Oh, snap. All right. <laughs> That's like a if you know, you know kind of oh. place. I don't really go on Snapchat, but when I do, it's like Are you on that TikTok? You know, you know I all I am I'm also on TikTok. Oh, oh shout out to TikTok. I spent so much of my time on TikTok. Oh my it's, god. It's actually ridiculous. It's concerning. It's concerning how much time I spent on TikTok. But it's it, you just it's like it's it's this generation's vine. It is. You it just is. roll through. Yeah. By the way, I miss Vine. Shout out to Vine. Yeah. It shaped me. It's funny because Vine so cool. Vine is the one that set the stage for like um short form video content. They were the mm-hmm. first, actually. And then mm-hmm. like Instagram. Wait. And then after that, I forgot what was after that, but basically like Instagram incorporated video and there was Snapchat. And then Snapchat incorporated story. Mm-hmm. And then Instagram bought or Facebook bought Instagram, Facebook integrated story, now Twitter integrated stories. And now there's like reels uh, and then there's YouTube sh- shorts or whatever they're called. Yeah. And weird. now there's TikTok. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, so it's all been this, like, it's been all the same thing really yeah. short, short form video content because people have just have short attention spans. Yeah. But Vine was the blueprint. Vine was the blueprint. Yeah. So shout out to Vine. And it's unfortunate that they got eaten up, but that's kind of how the social media conglomerate is that I know that's a story for another day too, but Mm-hmm. um yeah business they all they all just eat each other up at some point yeah yeah we'll see which one reigns supreme because i feel like long term they'll all be one we'll see which one reigns supreme i think it's going to be google i think google's going to eat them all up and oh. uh just take over i'm just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> who, who, who really knows it could be amazon like google plus what yeah yeah oh yeah google plus died too oh yeah yeah rip yeah, yeah. well thanks for having me andre i appreciate it
Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A very valuable conversation. And here's the funny thing, too. Another net good that came out of this is that you are my friend. I feel that we're very close, even though there have been very few moments that we've actually hung out and like interacted with each other. Yeah. Um, like we just found each other through Twitch again. There were a few other like brothers and sisters that I found through Twitch again that they just started streaming. I met them in community, but it, it already feels like they're my brother or my sister because we were in the community. And I think that familial connection is another thing that the community did right. That when they say, oh, you can come to my house and I'll, I'll give you food and whatever. You can stay the night. No mm -hmm. You don't even have to know. You, you don't even have to have met them before. But that familial connection is always there. And I think that's another thing that community that the community did right. And they should continue, they should continue doing. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Because I feel like um, if I needed to, let's say, like, go to New York or something or whatever, Seattle, like there's a sister, her name, um, shout out to Ban Ban. Mm -hmm. um, she and I um, are so close, so much closer now than when we were in the community together. And yeah, we kept in touch over the years. But as of lately, you know, she there was a year where she came to L.A. twice mm -hmm. and I housed her. I took her around and all of that stuff. And, you know, we established like a better, a much better connection now, especially like later on, like outside mm -hmm. in the community than when we were inside of it. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's I agree with what you said about the familial connection being like one of the most impactful things that yeah. we learned in that. So, yeah. One last thing I want to say is like growing up, you, you, it's not just, you know, the church community or whatever, but in any community that you're in, like the more you grow, you, you find out who the real ones are, right? Mm -hmm. And your, your social network doesn't have to be that big, right? You don't have to mm -hmm. be connected to that many people. And I know young people are really all about how many followers can I get, um, whatever, how many friends do I have in my life? But it's not about how many, it's about the quality ones. It's about the ones who are there for you. Um, you, you, you just find out who the real ones are. And that's been a tough lesson to learn, especially growing up, growing up in a community where everyone calls you brother, everyone calls you sister, but not everyone really means it, right? They think they mean it because in their heart, they do want to serve you and they do want to create a better community, but you know by their actions, the ones who really meant it and the ones who are really going to be there forever. And a lot of times it's circumstantial. Maybe they just live somewhere else. Maybe they just didn't happen to hang out with you that much. I don't know. But there are some people who really just say it to say it. And I, I, that's a reality. That's a reality yeah. that I feel like I want to get across. Yeah. And there are people it's who just... It's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. It happens. It, it definitely happens. They call me a brother just to call me a brother. Mm. But they, I, I felt that there were a lot of people who said that who really didn't see me as a brother. And I have a small bitterness and maybe even a resentment towards those people. That's some, not something I want to hold on to, and it's never something I'm actually going to bring up to them. But mm -hmm. that existed in my life, and it was tough, and it was a, it was a really a lesson to be learned that um, they, they weren't the real ones. You're a real one. Yeah. I think you're a real one. Thanks. Yeah. You too. You too, fam. You too. I try to be. I try to be. Maybe I'm fake. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I think I'm I mean, one of the real. I think I'm one of the realest ones out. there is. I. I think I'm the one of the realest ones there is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might I be the. I think I might be the realest one. I love that for you. I love this self realization for you. <laughs> I'm the realest one in the whole world. I mean, I agree. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, me too. I'm not saying I don't. I just. <laughs> I agree too. Yeah, I'm just kidding. As you should, as yeah. you should. Yeah, as you should. You should believe in your. You should believe in yourself highly, sir. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny when I joke with people this way. Yeah. Oh, anyway. My God. Yeah, this was a blast. This was this was a lot of fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. This was a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad I got a lot of it out because I feel like I'm starting to like, not let go. Oh yeah, let go. Yeah. Of, like, no, it whatever helps. Was lingering in there. Yeah, this helps in our in our letting go because. It's going to be with me forever. You know, my wife got, went through it too. So, yeah. I'm happy to talk to someone about this story. <laughs> someone who experienced yeah. kind of the same things. <laughs> same. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a small world, right? Like, who's actually going to listen to this and relate? You know, just a few people. But it still matters because, like, that's, that was a huge part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because maybe, maybe there are people who are going through something similar. Yeah. Or, or maybe they're in, they're in the community still and going through the same thing now. Who knows? 
So true. Yeah. True. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. good. It's healthy for us that we separated ourselves in uh, to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. All right. Yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna stop stop recording now. Say bye bye to everyone. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>